I will, which uh, complainant or counsel for respondent, counsels for respondent, whoever would like to go first, um, I'll let you respectfully raise your hand um, if you'd like to discuss kind of where we are. Mr. Littlefield, feel free to take the floor first. Thank you, Mr. Gober. Um, uh, earlier this week, we uh, began conversations uh, and uh, uh, earlier this evening, we signed a settlement agreement and release between myself and Save Austin Now. I believe that um, uh, the agreement is going to be emailed to all of the commissioners. Uh, the uh, I'll give a quick oral summary of the agreement. Um, effective uh, June 9th today, uh, Save Austin Now will refrain from engaging in any petition gathering efforts. Uh, Save Austin Now will begin the process of winding down and terminating as an entity uh, starting now with the goal of terminating by October, but no later than December 31st of this year. Uh, Save Austin Now will file its IRS Form 990 for the 2020 tax year with the IRS on or before October 15th of this year. Uh, Save Austin Now will provide uh, uh, me the opportunity uh, to have a hard copy of that agreement, uh, excuse me, of that 990 form. Um, uh, Save Austin Now is going to uh, make donations of $10,000 to the Salvation Army, $10,000 to Caritas, and $10,000 to Mobile Loaves and Fishes on or before August 31st of this year. Uh, I will relinquish the right to file any future complaint and or lawsuit against Save Austin Now that involves the allegations that I made against Save Austin Now and the complaint filed with the City of Austin Ethics Review Commission. Um, uh, I am uh, uh, I am going to withdraw the ethics complaint for consideration uh, and or review by the City of Austin's Ethics Review Commission. Um, the City of Austin's Ethics Review Commission will not engage in any final vote regarding the ethics complaint. Uh, with the exception of a final vote to dismiss and or mute to the ethics complaint and no referral will be made to uh, uh, and no investigation conducted by the city of Austin attorney, Travis County attorney or the Travis County district attorney. Um, Russ, what did I miss here or what did I not state correctly? You think? No, I think, I think that's a good summary of kind of working through all of the points. And I believe Mr. Sheets has signed copies uh, of this agreement. Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. Yes. Um, thank you for the summary. Um, and I think that uh, Lynn has emailed to all of us to our commission accounts, copies of that agreement. Um, I would, uh, uh, I'm gonna just, in the interest of efficiency, would it be okay with the parties to have that agreement kind of made as part of like our public uh, record of the meeting sort of attached to the minutes, so to speak. But sometimes we have background materials from hearings and meetings that are posted along with, um, I believe that's right, Lynn can say, what are you talking about? And I'll stop talking. But would it be uh, fair to have this be kind of a public record for review? I have no issue with that. And we, we certainly, uh, didn't include any kind of confidentiality provision or anything in that. So, right. Yeah. And no, I didn't see any kind of, um, uh, what do they call them? Gag clauses or, um, anyway. gag orders. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so with that, um, I think, I think this is where we're left commissioners. Um, we do not have a kind of clear cut, procedure by which a complainant will formally withdraw complaints. We also do not have clear cut procedures and guidelines for settlement agreements of this kind. I do think that there is a real interest in the commission uh, kind of resolving complaints before it. This is a complaint that has taken eight months. Um, and this is, this is a possible resolution. I think reading the terms of the agreement it is contingent upon our dismissing this case. Um, it, it, let me just kind of kick it to the parties. Am I correct in understanding that sort of contingency clause of this agreement? That they're not- that being, 
Yeah, that'd be correct. So basically the contingent is the process ends now and then the rest of the terms would kick in for compliance with the settlement agreement. Okay. Commissioner Stanton, go ahead. Yes, is there not another clause, not only the now of dismissing this complaint, but also in the future, the commission could not bring forth any other complaints against Save Austin now in the future? Did I hear that correctly, that that was also a clause of the settlement? Well, so here's how I read this. Um, it's so I, I, are you referring to the bottom of page one clause 7.2? Oh, I, I was, I, I thought that was a settlement clause that I thought yes. that was a clause as a part of the settlement. And, yes, and I, okay. Okay. And, and here's how, here's how I read it to answer your question. I don't believe that it is. So if there were a subsequent complaint filed against Save Austin now under different facts by a different complainant, I don't think the settlement agreement reaches that because the way I read this clause, um, that if the, this agreement is contingent on the ERCs not engaging in a final vote regarding the complaint, meaning this complaint that we're talking about right now, or a future complaint involving the facts that gave rise to this complaint. So that would be, say like Mr. Littlefield didn't bring the same complaint again, but someone else brought the same complaint alleging the same facts and violations. Um, so that is, and there's an exception that we could dismiss such complaints if they did come up and we, I am assuming that we would have to kind of make a judgment call just in the interest of um it's my understanding yeah. chair i'm sorry this is yeah. to interrupt it, 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 it's my understanding that that the only obligation made, made on this agreement is is made on mark littlefield and not bringing this complaint back or another complaint these facts or that i don't get someone else to do that for me sure um but there's no other obligation made on this commission based because of this agreement right thank you um, for that clarification Sure. And, and I'm just going to, I see a couple of hands raised and I want to give them a chance, but I just want to ask if that is a correct interpretation of that clause on the respondent's part. That if there were a separate allegation on separate facts uh, for a separate violation against Save Austin now, that this settlement agreement does not foreclose a future complainant raising a future complaint. Yeah, it, basically what that's intended is it's not a kind of a, it's a double jeopardy clause to right. where we don't settle this and then come back and have to deal with the same complaint over really arising from the same facts. If there was something different and another violation based off of different facts that a complainant brought, that would be fair game. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's basically, we are not going to relitigate this issue again after it's settled. Sure. Okay, I see Commissioner Greenberg and Commissioner McCormick. So go ahead, Commissioner Greenberg. I'm gonna unmute this time. Um, I'm really uncomfortable with this. This is saying that we can't take a vote. This is saying that they're not um, admitting responsibility for the violation. Um, I think they're just, you know, you can give $30,000. I understand you can raise that much in two or three days with a GoFundMe campaign um, <laughs> compared to what was raised in this, what the, you know, two petition drives were, were done. I mean, this is only on the first one um, without any disclosure of who was paying for it. I feel like the settlement is wrong. We had a, a previous settlement offer that at least um, accepted responsibility for the allegations, I believe, maybe I'm wrong, and accepted a certain letter of penalty, and we said, no, we want to go ahead and have the hearing. Um, this is like taking it completely out of our hands. I know it's 11 o'clock and very appealing, <laughs> but yeah. it seems wrong to me. All right, I appreciate that. Um, 
Uh, yes, counsel for respondent. Um, you said earlier we would get three minutes to speak. I was wondering when we might be able to, to do that. I know we summarized the settlement, but I thought I might be able to add a little bit of additional information. That would be sure. helpful. That, sure. Uh, I, I kind of intended for the three minutes to happen concurrently. Um, but okay. I, I'll give you some time right now. Uh, I will go, I will go, I will go, I will try to go quickly, but, um, at this point, you know, I will I will be frank. As far as a lot of the the time and resources that are going into this to even attend these hearings and be here for five hours, the amount of just time and money being burned on this is just frankly ridiculous. I think you know it's just in the best interest of all of the parties, whether it's it's the complainant or the respondents, to come to a resolution at this point. I would urge the commissioners to ask the question to their outside, either outside legal counsel of what is within your jurisdiction to do with this process, because you are very limited in what can actually come out of this vote today. And I can, and I think based off of what Mr. Littlefield is trying to achieve, he is going to get that with this settlement agreement. And frankly, there are a lot of people and organizations that are going to benefit greatly from going through this route as, a, as opposed to just continuing to drag this out further and further to where we have to keep showing up for hearings with ultimately leading to what may be only a $500 fine. So I think it is in the best interest of the city of Austin and the residents of the city of Austin to put this behind us. And I think Mark, even Mr. Littlefield, sees it that way as well. Um, I will give you, Mr. Littlefield, the briefest of comments. I really want to let the commissioners talk about this um, because this is this is not a normal process. This is not a normal hearing. Um, a normal hearing, we would have a Q and A and ten minute presentation. So, very briefly, Mr. Littlefield, I will take a comment from you. Thank you for your time. It's been eight months. It's been very frustrating. Um, I know it's frustrating for me. I can imagine equally more frustrating for y'all the last eight months to go through this process. What I wanted was for Save Austin now to stop doing this. Check. Uh, I wanted them to say they're not going to do it again. Check. Um, uh, I want to see their donors. Check. Um, and um, and there's thirty thousand dollars going to organizations that are serving people experiencing homelessness. Uh, and what are we giving up in return? We're giving up the Ethics Review Commission deciding which level of letters are going to send Save Austin now. Uh, I'm not saying this is the best outcome. I'm not saying this is the right outcome. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought about this a lot the last two days, uh, about whether to sign this or not. Uh, we went back and forth on some of the details and some of the points. Um, uh, I know that you guys have, have put a lot of time into this and you're losing your right to do this, uh, to make a decision. Um, I can't tell you what the right thing to do is, but I did sign it. That's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, thank you. And with that, I'm just, unless there are burning questions for either party, um, commissioners, I'm going to encourage us to just kind of keep it among us. Discussing what we're going to do with this agreement. So, Commissioner Greenberg and then Secretary Lerner. Um, we're giving up the opportunity to say that this is a violation, that this is not permitted, that this is not allowed under the city code. Um, the number eight is really a non like not okay with me. That it says that no. What Open you you broke up a little bit, yeah. uh, Commissioner Greenberg. Uh, your audio quality kind of. Okay, uh, I'm not okay with saying that this may not be an inability by Save Austin. Now is not considered wrongful or unlawful activity. This is basically saying. Not only can the same parties make a new pack and do this again the next time they want a petition, anyone else can too. It's saying you don't need to disclose who's paying when you are 
preparing for a ballot measure with a petition. That's what this is saying, and I'm not okay with it. Okay, uh, Secretary Lerner, and then I saw Commissioner McCormick. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I think what's not sitting well is the fact that it's like they're now paying money to us cause, and therefore, the. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I dropped, I dropped off and came back on. Mm -hmm. So, am I to understand that mm -hmm. their agreement to drop the uh, the complainant's agreement to drop the whole action is because the the respondent is willing to contribute to a cause. I think there were other there are other provisions in that agreement about um, Save Austin now winding down um, uh, and the but, fact but that the is over. right right uh, yeah, the ballot measure is over yes of course it's the over, election but, already happened right. they got the petition on the ballot the pet the vote we all know um, of course they're done well there's always going to be more I mean I guess I sure. just I just feel like as if. This is a very strange, I, I would prefer that this was just, we have met, we have worked things out, we are going to take this to our own resolution. And, but like, I don't know, now I feel like it's, what does this say about resolution? Like if you, you can bring someone to a complaint and then, then because in order to get it dismissed, they agree to give money to something. Maybe I'm oversimplifying this, but that's what it just mm -hmm. sounded like to me. And I don't, I don't, I mean, so what happens to those who can't do that? Right. Um, that's a fair question. I uh, see Commissioner Levins. Oh, I, sorry, Commissioner McCormick, I, I apologize. Uh, oh. You were you were next in line, then Commissioner. And mine McCormick. is a very simple first question. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sheets, the signatures are uh not original signatures, they're automated signatures. If we settle this, do we get signatures, actual signatures? And the reason I'm so adamant about this is because I spent 30 years working elections and signatures, original signatures are very important. Not uh, signed signatures by a robo-pen. That's all. No, it's petty, but I'm petty. Well, with today's technology, signatures signed with DocuSign are considered to be legal signatures. However, if it was important to have what we call wet signatures, I'm sure the prop the parties could provide those yes. uh, tomorrow or ne next week. If that if that was a, a real concern for you, it is a concern for me. Well, I'm, my guess is that the parties would agree to accommodate that. Well, and the reason is because of my 30 years of work in elections. Okay, okay. that's it. Uh, Commissioner Levins. The, the settlement agreement, I don't, I don't know what to make of it. Um, I share some of Commissioner Greenberg's uh, being troubled by it, although she and I may be troubled for different reasons, but that's neither here nor there. I think the point of this is we are we have limited jurisdiction. And if Mr. Littlefield decides to withdraw his complaint for any right. reason or no reason at all, it takes it out of our hands. Yeah. We are we are essentially and this uh, we're essentially sitting here as judges and we can only hear and decide on live cases and controversies. And yep. when Mr. Littlefield withdraws his complaint, there is no longer a live controversy between the two. And we have no power to do anything other than say, okay, it's dismissed because there's nothing here for us to decide. Um, we, don't, we don't get to weigh in on whether we like the settlement or not. Um, the, oh, the parties okay. giving us this information is more information than they were, were required to they give us. Yeah. All they had to do was come and Mr. Littlefield says, I hereby withdraw my complaint. See you guys later. Mm -hmm. And our hands would be tied. Um, so that's, that's my assessment of what our power is as the commission, given that Mr. Littlefield has said he's going to withdraw his complaint. Now, whether, whether that's enforceable between Save Austin now and Mr. Littlefield, um, you know, based upon what the city does or what we do or anything like that, that's, that also is not our concern. That's for them to figure out. 
Uh, Secretary Lerner, go ahead, and then Commissioner Stanton. I mean, I think I am. I'm inclined to agree with Commissioner Lovins. I do see the policy pitfalls in that because an ethics violation is an ethics violation. And if it's raised by a complainant, it could be in theory, it, you know, it could be something that the, the, um, the commission decides to make some kind of ruling on, I suppose, but our, our, our process now is very, is complaint driven. They really shouldn't, if they're going to withdraw it, they should just withdraw it and not give us any reasons why I would, I would not like to know that it was linked to some other decision. It should just be, we are withdrawing and we should not have any part of any rationale there. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Stanton. I also support Commissioner Levin's perspective that, um, one, I want to acknowledge uh, both parties and your working together to come up with a resolution. Um, I appreciate the the work, um, and not that you have to. Not that your answer, um, Mr. Littlefield, affects my um, stance on this, but just maybe for my edification or peace of mind. Uh, I'd like to know if you are, have you signed this settlement and you are moving forward um, without duress, that this is, this is of your own uh, free will and you are not uh, motivated, you know, by anything nefarious, but th this is something that you truly want um, that you are, again, it doesn't have effect and it, you know, has no bearing on the decision. But I think from my own peace of mind, I'd, I'd love to know that this is something that you really willingly did. Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Stanton, you're, you're very wise to always question my motives. Uh, <laughs> but um, um, like I said, is um, uh, I wanted to save Austin now, the nonprofit, to not do this anymore. Um, but, someone said earlier that that this was something. Uh, the election's over. Uh, it doesn't matter anymore. There's a new petition out there by the same group. Exactly. Uh, and we're not sure if they're going to use a PAC or use a nonprofit in order to pay for the petition signatures. Now, with this agreement, we we know that now they're going to use the PAC. They're no longer going to use the uh, the nonprofit. That was a big goal of mine. The next time a nonprofit pops up that says they're going to do this again, I'll be back in front of you. The next time I won't wait, like I did on this one. Uh, hopefully it won't take eight months either. Uh, but no, I did this. Uh, I am uncertain if I'm doing the right thing or not, but I promise you I did this willingly. Thank you. Thank you. Secretary Lerner. Um, I, I do, I want to ask Commissioner Levins, do you see any policy concerns with a complaint being brought before the commission taking eight months to, it's been dragged out for a very long time and then being dropped because they were able to secure $30,000 outside agreement to a pretty good amount. Yeah. I mean, I, I, despite what I said before, I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit cons I'm just troubled by the use of our commission um, in such a way. The potential for that. I I share your concern. I think that the your policy uh, issues are well taken, but we are not a policy making body. We don't the if the city council wants to weigh in on that and amend the code, that's certainly their right. Um, well. Presumably it's their right, but it's not our right. We only get to decide the cases that are before us. And Mr. Littlefield took this one out of our docket. Uh, I appreciate that. I'll say we're not a policy making body unless we are um, in the sense that we're often called to like give recommendations to council on policy. Um, and, and I think it's uh, useful to have a mind towards uh, I mean, the question of what precedent this sets is a question of policy, um, I think. Uh, that could be just a judicial philosophy uh, disagreement, but um, the I, I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let anyone else say what they have to say before I say my next thing. 
Commissioners, the floor is open for any final thoughts. Yes, Commissioner McCormick. What are we gonna do when this happens again? We need to think about the future of this could very well happen again. And what kind of guidelines? 50,000. Will we have to do? May I respond to that, Commissioner? Mm -hmm. I think if we don't like this, we, to the extent we have any policy making ability, it's as the chairman said, it's to make recommendations. Um, if we want to go either as a body or as private individuals who are residents of Austin and tell our city council that they need to amend the code to stop this, then that's certainly within all of our rights, at least as individuals, if not as a as a commission. Um, if if we don't like this, we can try to get the code amended, but we don't have the power to amend the code by saying we're going to now start hearing cases that are not not live controversies. There's no complainant pursuing this. All right. uh, Commissioner Greenberg. When you say this, you mean we don't like this being dropped out of our hands? Or do you mean there's no policy that says that you need to have a PAC when you gather petition signatures for a ballot measure? No, it, it, Which are you talking about? If, Which this are you referring to? The Well, the this that I'm referring to here is this, uh, a settlement, situation. really any settlement, whether it's yeah. whether it's for payment or not for payment. Because again, uh, Mr. Littlefield could have just come in and said, I hereby withdraw my complaint, good night. And that would have no legal difference than what he's done by saying, "Here's here are the terms under which I've agreed to withdraw it. If he withdraws it, he withdraws it. And if we don't like that he can withdraw it, then the city council needs to change the code to put something in there that says once a complaint is made, there's certain parameters around when and if it can be withdrawn. All right, All right. commissioners, any, any other uh, comments before I offer mine? Commissioner Greenberg. Was there any discussion of a different phrasing for number eight that said that they did um, acknowledge that a violation occurred? Mr. Littlefield. Did you try? No, to? There was never a, um, that was never on the table. Got it. Do you believe that a violation occurred? I do. So I'm, I'm going to piggyback just briefly. Um, when you say that was never on the table, it was never on the table as uh Discussion. In the sense that it was never discussed, or it was never on the table in the terms that it was a non-negotiable. I don't think. Uh, I think that there is. I don't want to get into the nitty-gritty of. Sure, you don't have to. You don't have to like talk about the specific negotiations and the terms, like draft documents or anything like that. I'm just. I'm curious. Uh, the that is. Let me actually just kind of cut that off, Commissioner Greenberg. I feel you on that specific clause of the agreement. Um, the, if there's any part of this agreement that uh, is kind of the most um, deal breaker. Yeah, the, the thing that gives me the most heartburn is that. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give my comments real quick and they're brief comments because I don't want uh, I try the reason that we're here at 1120 p.m. right now is because I don't want my comments and my opinions and views on a particular complaint to have any kind of undue weight. Um, and I don't want to like have commissioners, um, you know, be unduly swayed. I want them to vote their consciences. And I don't want them to be uh, too, too harshly persuaded by something that I say. Not that I think I'm a great persuader or anything like that. Um, but where I am struggling in this exact moment is, uh, um, is this a, we are, a, we've discussed 
before, how we are a quasi-judicial body, right? Um, we are not quite a court, but we find good analogs in courts. And the question that I'm struggling with, to kind of break it down in the simplest terms, is this a criminal case or is this a civil case, right? Like, a, is this kind of, is a better analog that this is a criminal case where we ask citizens to prosecute, quote unquote, because the harm in a criminal case is on the body politic, it's on the people, because it's the people versus blah, 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 right? Um, or is this a civil suit? Is Mr. Littlefield aggrieved because of a specific injury inflicted upon him? Um, and I think this is an uncomfortable middle ground. This is kind of like a, a good criminal case analog in the sense that the harm in campaign finance cases is more often than not the voters and the members of the public that live uh, with the results of a vote. But on the other hand, um, you know, I, I find myself very much persuaded by Mr. by Commissioner Levin's uh, sort of point that the, the it is a complainant who brings a complaint, and that is the basis for us having jurisdiction over anything, unless we want to have our own complaint that we initiate ourselves under the term under our city code provisions. Um, and and I. I am I am struggling personally, but Secretary Lerner, I see your hand and I want to. Well, it, yeah. and maybe we do have to equate ourselves to a court of law where somebody can totally waste our time for eight months to extract uh, something that they want by using our process and our system and then have side deals and then drop it. And because they got what they wanted. Now, a court is going to be like glad to remove things off their docket for you know like they're they're very happy to see people just like resolve on their own we this when we have th this is takes the place of other things that we could be doing i don't want this body to be a place where people come and waste our time because they just want to use us to get some kind of outside deal but um to the extent that we can't we can't stop that. I, I think we can stop that. I think we absolutely can stop that. I, I don't, I'm not, I, I can't pour through the, the code at this moment to, to see if whether or not that is appropriate. But um, sure. I think, I guess I would just say, we probably just need to make a decision about this case right now and deal with the longer term ramifications separately. Right. Um, so briefly, I'm gonna interject because uh, Lynn Carter with the law department uh, has informed me that there's precedent for withdrawal of complaints and I want to hear what she has to say. Thank so Lynn, if you're with us, please, please educate us on the precedent of withdrawal of complaints. So I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure Commissioners McCormick and Danberg run the commission at the time, but um, we had 16 complaints filed by, uh, by Fred Lewis against registered lobbyists who had declined to disclose their, the amount of compensation paid to them. That's right. And uh, the lobbyists agreed to disclose their compensation. Fred Lewis accepted that and uh, showed up at the meeting and said that he was withdrawing his complaint. The commission voted to dismiss those 16 complaints. Um, because the complaints were withdrawn. Um, and I just want to make one other point because I feel like I need to do this since I represent the city attorney's office. I'm not representing the commission with this statement, but I, I will just say that, of course, the agreement is between the parties and the, you know, it's not, the Ethics Review Commission is not joining this agreement. It has no authority to enter a settlement agreement. Only the city attorney and council would have authority on to do that. So. Oh, well, I'll start Luis looks, yeah, Luis looks like he's stuck. I would like to actually move to like end the conversation and take a vote. I don't know if others. Ms. Ms. Water, I'm sorry. Well, we're not a party. Oh, that's right. Uh, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was wondering if I could just respond to something. I feel like something was said about me earlier. I just want to chime in. 
because something was said about me personally. I just wanted to say something, if it's appropriate. Sure. I don't know if it's appropriate. Uh, Luis is not. He's chair. The chair is currently frozen. So go ahead. So go ahead. Well, no one's stopping. Um, uh, Commissioner Lerner, you know, you said that you didn't want to. You know, uh, you felt bad. You, you felt like um, that someone had used this body for eight uh, for eight months in order to get something out of this. Mm -hmm. I totally understand why you feel that way. Mm -hmm. But just to be very clear and to set the record straight, is that this was not my intent. The phone rang mm -hmm. two days ago. The phone rang two days ago with an offer. Uh, and so I listened to the offer. That was not my intent to sit here for eight months and end up where we are tonight. But to me, I had two options, a letter of reprimand of some level or the things that I really wanted. This organization is out of business. They're not gonna do this anymore. And it's probably inappropriate to even say this, but I threw out a dollar amount and Save Austin now tripled it. So it wasn't me about it wasn't even about the money for me, but I figured as long as the money's there, we'll ask for it. So I'm sorry that you feel that way. I totally understand why you do, but I hope you'll believe me when I say to you that was not my intent to spend eight months to get here. But you thank see you the, the message. I understand, and I thank you for your interjections. I just, it, it, you know, when we start having entities that, when we have respondents who can then have a complaint dismissed, and yes, it's a leper, it, it is not, it's not of the monetary value that this donation will be, but having a, a judgment against a body of the city for an ethics violation is meaningful. But if you have money to, others don't have money for that. Like we see an equity issue on this commission. We've just seen it earlier today. Um, so that is my concern, but I also understand. I mean, I say all those things, it's it's up to us to, to remedy weaknesses in our code. Um, so I, I'm not sure that, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure this one case. We all wish right. this body had different capabilities. Right. Um, okay, Thank Lynn, you. Lynn, we have lost Chairman Soberon. I am here if you can hear me. Oh, we can hear you. I, I can't Hi. see where you are. Um, okay. I have, well, I've dialed in um, okay. because uh, I've got beef with Spectrum, apparently, um, <laughs> and I am trying to restore my internet um, so that I can uh, see everyone and be seen. Um, but in the meantime, Secretary Lerner, because I can't see people raising their hands, I, right, yeah. I'm going to politely ask that you continue presiding until I'm able to restore my video connection. Okay, thank you. I guess procedurally speaking, it sounds like we have a, just a, a, a withdrawal of, of a complaint. I would like clarification from Lynn Carter as to what procedure we need to undertake right now. Well, I defer to uh, Steve yeah. Sheets on this. I think um, unless he he does he defers to me. No, no, I'm, I'm willing to take it on. I think at this point, because the complainant has indicated that he wishes to withdraw the complaint, that at this point it would be a, a, in order for there to be a motion for this commission to dismiss the complaint because it, the complainant has withdrawn. Okay, who would like to make that motion? Commissioner Stanton? I would like to make that motion. I move that uh, we as a commission dismiss this complaint because the complainant has withdrawn the complaint. Do I have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Levins, okay. Um, all right, is any discussion around the motion? Okay. Hearing no discussion, we can move to a vote. Um, okay, uh, we our chair is no longer uh, Chair Soberon. Are you on the phone still? I don't see you. I I am on the phone, oh, good. and okay. I'll be able to unmute myself um, when my name okay. is called on the roll call. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go down in order. So, uh, Chairman Soberon. Aye. Um. Okay, so Vice Chair Hurry is absent. Um, Secretary Lerner, un unhappily, I. Um, Commissioner Greenberg, abstain. Okay. Commissioner McCormick, okay. 
Just hold your space bar. Sorry, it's muted. I reluctantly. I reluctantly. Um, Commissioner Kale. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Lovins. Aye. Commissioner Tenayuka. I think you said I. It didn't. You didn't give it enough time. But yes. I, I, okay. I'm gonna just say I. There we go. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Stanton. Yes or I. Okay. So I think that's one abstention and the rest eyes. So the motion passes. Can I? Uh, can I just offer some comments really quick? Mm -hmm. um, no. I know no. You, you are presiding. <laughs> I know. I know it's so no. late. Uh, all Ten seconds, say, Louise. Ten seconds, Chairman. Yep. You can. Thank you. Please, presiding member, um, give me 10 seconds. And it is just to say that I do not like this outcome. Um, but I think we're kind of bound by the fact that the complainant withdrew um, and that we're governed by complaints that are raised by complainants and this may be different under a different case um, but I think I would implore the commissioners to uh, those that are on the working group to seriously consider this kind of thing as we consider what sort of changes we need to make to our rules of procedure and what changes we're going to propose to city council for substantive code changes because uh, this I, I don't think this is an optimal outcome but I think it's kind of the, the one that we're left with. Um, so that is that. And I also want to just, I want to thank the parties for working on this. I know it's hard to reach an agreement period. So I don't want to discount the difficulty in reaching the agreement. And I want to thank them for, for working with us over the past eight months. I want to give a huge thank you to uh, Mr. Sheets, our outside counsel, for working with us over the eight months. I want to thank the commissioners themselves um, for uh, having the patient tonight and over the past eight months on this complaint. Um, one of the things that the complaint that the commission should be doing is quickly resolving complaints. And I think that um, I may have been a little generous myself in granting continuance after continuance yes. after continuance. Um, and, uh, but I, I would just for the record want to have it clear that this is not a normal complaint not a normal process um, and that I think we should make it very clear that we'll address this kind of thing in the future. That's all. I all right. To we're way past 10 seconds. Um, thank you, Chair, Mr. Chair. We appreciate your leadership and all of your, um, you really, we know that you care a lot about what's going on in this commission. So appreciate that. I think it would be good for us to have a sort of an after action as a commission um, on this case. Um, what is, so may I ask, um, Chair Soberon, do you want to go back to the agenda at this point? Yes, we have uh, another agenda item. Oh, and I will be online soon. I think my internet's back, so I'll be able to start presiding again um, soon, but you're welcome to can, move us we, on to the next agenda item. Can, okay, can I, are we able to sort of like hold, like hold agenda items for the next meeting at some point? <laughs> We're almost at midnight. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to either outside council or Lynn because what. The
green, actually. It's green, but it's okay now. The reverb is gone, so um, that's good. I lost so somebody two... there for a few minutes. Okay. We all did. We... Okay. Yeah, we all lost. Okay. 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 So here we are. We're back, Mr. Sheets. We um, are getting dangerously close to midnight here. I think that's we've asked a lot of all of us. Um, so I, I don't have the agenda in front of me now. Um, so I had to move. Can we can we hold? I guess I, I need to ask everybody if they would like to proceed, or if we would like to take up our remaining agenda items at a future meeting. I would like to table, and I'd be happy to make that motion if that is the proper well, process. Okay, so let's see, Mr. Sheets. Yeah, well, I, we just have minutes to approve and. Sorry, don't know. And so, some reports so, from working groups. We can do that. Oh, now. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, the, the question I would have, and Mr. Sheets, you might be the one to answer this. On agenda item number four, if we postpone that, do we run into problems with the timing of, of making the vote on, on that complaint? Well, that is a procedural question that I would rather defer to Lynn if she's willing to address that. She has more experience with these procedures than I do. Um, it's not a problem. There aren't any deadlines that are going to be problematic in terms of that. Um, but I'm sure <laughs> Ms. Overturf would uh, appreciate an up or down vote and she may still be on the call okay. she stayed on for a long time so oh. I, um, i'm still on the call i don't know oh. if anybody can hear me okay if you are there then i didn't i didn't know that you were still there <laughs> so hi uh i'm back um i'm happy to take the reins again um Good. 